Now, perhaps we wanted to track the movements of somebody over a certain period of time. What we could actually look at is the distance that they've travelled, and we're going to use the letter S to represent distance that's measured in metres. And then along the bottom, because we're going to look at how that uh, varies over time, we're going to have time, in this case, measured in seconds. So we've got a graph where we've got distance and time. Now, imagine that uh, this person just started walking at a uniform speed in the same direction. Every second, they go the same distance away from where they started. And we can actually start to plot that on the graph. And what we might find then is, provided they're going at a constant velocity or a constant speed, we'd get a straight line like this. Effectively, the longer they walk for, the bigger the distance that they've travelled. So that's them when they're moving. But if they then stay completely stationary and they're still, every second the distance that they travel doesn't increase. So we could then maybe record this um, and we'd find that over time their distance doesn't increase, but the time does. And we have a flat straight line on the graph. And in this case, uh, maybe the witch um, gets a bit worried about why you're actually watching her. And maybe she runs off or she flies off on a broom or something like that. Now, that means in one second, she's going to be moving more metres than she was initially. And if we were to complete this on the graph, we'd get a graph that looks like this. So in the same amount of time, a greater distance has been covered. And this is really useful because what this does is it starts to visualise and actually represent the motion of a real object. It could be a witch, it could be a ball, it could be something, it could be anything to be honest, because what we can do is we can represent that journey on a distance time graph. Now, when you have um, the line here, the gradient of that line is equal to the distance divided by the time. And therefore, the gradient of a distance time graph is equal to the speed. And what we can see from the graph here is that maybe we've got a low speed initially when the gradient is quite shallow. Um, they are stationary, which means they've stopped. And then finally, they're going fast up here. And when you have a straight line on the graph, that means they're going at a constant speed or a constant velocity. So this distance time graph is a really, really useful way of visualising the motion of an object. In, in terms of what you might be asked to do with it, well, you might be given some data that you need to plot. In that case, it's really a test of your uh, scientific ability about how you plot data. It might be that you get a question where you maybe need to read some data off the graph. So it might ask you to identify where that object is moving quickest and then calculate its velocity. And if that's the case, all you need to do is read very carefully the data maybe at the start and the end of that section of the journey. And once you've got that data, you can then think about equations like uh, speed is equal to distance divided by time. You can use your numbers that you've taken off the graph to actually then calculate the final answer. So I've got a couple of worked examples underneath this where you're going to be looking at distance time graphs.